Today on Little Wars TV, we are excited to share a quick strike after action report for July 2nd, 1863, the second day of the Battle of Gettysburg. The AAR we're sharing today is a guest post submitted by a club in Virginia called Wednesday Night at the Fights. They've been gaming together since 1995. But after you watch this, I think you're going to be stunned to learn that this is the first wargame video they have ever made. We're sharing their quick strike as an excellent example of what you and your friends can do at home with some very basic equipment. And remember, nominations for our annual Caesar Awards have recently opened, and this year we have a new category for Best Quick Strike with a $250 cash prize. Go to CaesarAwards.com to make your nominations, and if you like this video, you could certainly nominate Rick, Steve, and all the guys at Wednesday Night at the Fights for the top prize. As the sun rose July 2nd, 1863, the Confederate Army of Northern Virginia was riding high after nearly breaking their Union opponents the day before. Their commander, General Robert E. Lee, planned a series of hammer blows to crush the United States Army of the Potomac and force a negotiated peace on a defenseless Washington. To win this day, the Confederates will have to capture some of the most famous sites in American military history. The Peach Orchard, Devil's Den, Little Round Top, Culp's Hill, Cemetery Hill. The Union forces, under the command of General George Meade, as of four days ago, desperately brought up reinforcements during the night and the morning. They determinedly prepared to meet the coming onslaught. For our scenario today, we are using rules from the board game Battle Cry, published by Hasbro. It's no longer in print, but you can often find copies for sale online. Battle Cry uses a card-driven command system, with players selecting cards from their hands to determine which of their units may move and attack. We have modified the rules for this large battle to have left and right wing commands plus a general and overall charge for each side. The wing commanders will play cards, move units, and resolve fights. The generals in charge will draw replacement cards and decide how to distribute them to their subordinates. Units include infantry, which can take up to four hits before being eliminated, artillery, which shoots far but only takes two hits to destroy, and leaders who become casualties with a single hit. Each side earns a battle flag for each enemy unit killed. Plus, the Confederates can score up to three flags for capturing key terrain objectives. The first side to collect 12 battle flags wins. Today's referee is Rick Wynn, who also designed the scenario, prepared the terrain, and painted the troops. Brett is our videographer. Playing on the Confederate side is Stuart in the role of left-wing commander Richard Ewell, Andy as the right-wing commander James Longstreet, and James as Robert E. Lee. Okay, so uh, the plan's gonna be we have strength on the wings. We're going to push for Culp's Hill, Stuart. Yes, sir. And drive between Culp's Hill yes, and, the, and the cemetery ridge. I want you to push towards that little round top. We uh, get that pincer going, and then at that point, we're going to be able to circle them up, round up all the unions, and head straight on to Washington, D.C. and win this war. Yes, aye, sir. aye, Hannibal. <laughs> for the Union, we have Steve as left-wing commander Winfield Hancock, 
Sean as right-wing commander Oliver Howard, and Tim as George Meade. Okay. Gentlemen, we know what's going to happen. Gettysburg, the Confederates are going to attack. We're going to have to respond to their attacks. We're going to have to move our reserves around and try to stop them wherever they are. So just look for your opportunities as you find them. And uh, I think that'll work. The battle opens with a strong Confederate push on both flanks. To the south, General Longstreet maneuvers towards Devil's Den while engaging the Union forces in the Peach Orchard at long range. Skillful maneuver and the personal leadership of Generals Hood and McClaws combined to make short work of two Federal infantry units. The Confederate right wing is off to an excellent start. In response to Longstreet's advance, General Hancock hastens Union reserves to this endangered flank. Barnes infantry guards Little Round Top, while Federal batteries near Cemetery Ridge drive back Sims Brigade with heavy loss. The second wave of Longstreet's attack destroys the Union 3rd Corps artillery, and bullets strike all around General Sickles. But that intrepid commander emerges unscathed in the first of several narrow escapes and retires to bring up more strength. Attack and counterattack follow in quick succession. The Confederates take the Peach Orchard and reach the foot of Little Round Top but find it hard to press further. By turn 7, Longstreet's advance has paused as Lee's warhorse searches for a vulnerability. Meanwhile, the tireless Sickles directs northern guns that eliminate another rebel infantry brigade. Then disaster strikes southern arms on turn 8. Robertson's Texas Brigade is eliminated and the gallant General Hood is wounded and carried from the field. Two flags for the Union in a single blow. Meanwhile, to the north, Confederate General Ewell cautiously advances on Culp's Hill with two brigades and artillery support. In a surprising riposte, Northern right-wing commander Howard launches a spoiling attack with Federal forces holding Culp's and Cemetery Hills, moving forward to engage the lead Confederate forces before Ewell can reinforce his advance. It's a risky move to advance off the high ground, Will it pay off? As in the South, attack follows counterattack and the casualties mount. But Howard's spoiling attack seems to have upset the Southern timetable. A series of lucky volleys eliminates Ewell's lead artillery unit in Williams' brigade, although the Federal Army also suffers high casualties. Ewell commits more forces on both sides of Gettysburg and drives the Bluecoats back to Culp's Hill. Time and again, the Southerners inflict casualties and force retreats on Howard's men, but they often fail to cause that last hit that would win them a victory flag. The early Confederate lead fades, then dwindles to nothing as the fortunes of war reward each side equally. Suddenly, the Confederates pay the price again for their aggressive front-line leadership as Jubal Early is struck by a marksman's bullet. The momentum of battle has turned against Lee's forces and Ewell is unable to make any headway against Cemetery Hill. It falls to Longstreet to pull off a miracle come from behind rebel win. But as he organizes a final push, General Sickles strikes again. He drives back Confederate artillery, depriving their infantry of much needed support. Surely he has earned his sobriquet, Sickles the Incredible. Can Longstreet's infantry take another Yankee flag and tie the score? Oh, good grief! <laughs> no hits. Truly, the Confederate high tide has crested. On turn 13, General Howard's riflemen finally finish off Hayes' battered brigade. 
the Army of Northern Virginia reaches its breaking point and General Lee orders the retreat. The Confederates will have to try their luck another day. Uh, we, we plan to do a pincer move on the, on the flanks and uh, initially started well, pushed them out of the Peach Orchard, which became the scene of a uh, back and forth battle, a lot of casualties there. Got to the feet of Little Round Top, but couldn't push to the top. On the other side, uh, really, uh, although several times threw the Federals off the ridge, didn't cause enough casualties and couldn't get up to Culp's Hill. In the end, we just lost too many guys in front of the hills, and, and that was the defeat. Well, when we were down three to zero, I thought the game was going to be over in another hour, and then we basically clawed our way back uh, just by good play and by being aggressive. So kudos to the two wing commanders. Thanks for watching. You'll find a link to the scenario below. That was a really fun after action report, especially if you're a uh, Dan Sickles fan. So thank you again to Rick, Steve, Brett, and all the guys at Wednesday Night at the Fights for submitting this AAR. If you would like to learn how to film your own quick strike after action report at home with your friends, we've got some very helpful tips for you. If you click somewhere over here floating in the ether next to me, we'll give you some ideas.